Can you say happy birthday to the museum? Happy birthday, museum. Big 40th. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy 40th birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Media Museum. really interesting to see who comes through the door, who you're going to meet. What's always exciting about this museum is the fact it changes each time. Orson Welles said about going to Hollywood to make Citizen Kane, he said it was the greatest train set a young boy had ever been given and I feel exactly the same way of working at the museum. The museum is so much more than just a building. It's alive with stories and histories. It's brimming with people who use their creativity to inspire visitors and families and schools. I have memory of coming here with school when it was called the National Museum of Photography, Film and Television. And we always used to try and get the acronym right. NMPFT, there you go. <laughs> there are people who have gone on to careers in film and in media who actually were inspired to do that by visits here. It kind of brought a whole group of creative people to Bradford who didn't live here before. I remember coming to Bradford for the very first time to go to the Alhambra when I was about 14 and I noticed this building across the road. I thought, what's that? Well, they do film things there. That'd be a good place to work, wouldn't it? and then it happened. There are lots of memories of the museum. So I came as a child and I loved it. I remember coming to the museum the first time to actually watch a film with my family. I used to come with my family and my grandparents here in the 90s. My favourite memory was when we got into the Guinness World Book of Records for having the most number of young people on their Nintendo DSs. We used to have themed weeks. And the one I remember most of all was Moshi Monster Week. I think it took everybody by surprise at how busy it was. Another really big memory of mine is Tim Peake's spacecraft when that was in the museum. And so many people go, is it real? Because it didn't look like a spaceship. It reminded me of something that Wallace and Gromit would make. It had round windows, it was burned. It didn't look like a big shiny spacecraft. And then another one would be when Piers Brosnan came. My son was little, we used to come here all the time, and he was a James Bond fan. And there was an event here, Desmond Llewellyn was Q at the time, so he was here. Patrick went off to the toilet and he came back and he said, Mum, Mum, I've just had a pee with Q. <laughs> I think one of the strangest would be unpacking a Wookiee when we had Star Wars here as an exhibition. We had closed the Kodak Gallery to do some maintenance work. And then somebody approached me and said, well, actually there are a family here who've come all the way from Ilford because their dad, used to work at the Kodak factory. I had a word with the contract manager and snuck them in and gave them a little tour while the workers were on a tea break. It's when you can make a small difference for people. I actually had my first kiss in this museum oh. in TV heaven. They used to kick us all out. You know, it used to be a popular hangout. And I've got lots of memories of the Pictureville cinema. Having unique cinemas is what brings people to watch film in Bradford. Bradford, we were the first IMAX in Europe. I was the first female European IMAX projectionist. Ta da! <laughs> With Pictureville, we've got the Cinerama screenings, which are now unique to the world. You can't see Cinerama anywhere else. We get people every film festival coming from all over the world to see this technology that we reinstalled in Bradford from this 1952 process. We used to have a festival called Bite the Mango Festival. We met famous people, you know, Bollywood actors. Oh, you must mention. I'm not going to say what it was, the flying carpet. <laughs> it's one of the ones that people talk about a lot when they remember how they came here when they were a child, was the magic carpet. I remember all the bits that everyone remembers, like the magic carpet and the witch, which used to absolutely terrify me. I'm still scared of Snow White. I don't think I've seen it to this day. The flying carpet one. The Aladdin's magic carpet. At the time, it felt so groundbreaking. It was like, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't know what a green screen was. I always hear people asking, where is it? When's it coming back? Honestly, the amount of people that made mentioned the flying car there. As we temporarily close our doors until summer 2024, we have so much to look forward to in the decade to come, with Bradford being crowned UK City of Culture 2025 and the opening of our brand new sound and vision galleries next year. This truly is our time. Sound and Vision has given us the opportunity to reach out to communities, to offer them the opportunity to be involved and to consult on sound and vision and to have a voice. I mean, the museum's got to be a central part of what's happening in Bradford at the moment, coming up in the next couple of years. It's, you know, it's, it's a national museum the museum and we're city of culture. I'm really excited just to see the museum get more recognition and become more of the pillar of the community that it's been for a very long time. I want people of Bradford to feel like it's somewhere they can just pop in. This museum's for them. We have these momentously beautiful new galleries arriving. You know, it's been a long time since we'd have such an extensive overhaul. 
we're quite a young museum still, even at 40, we can still try different things out. This whole refresh might just open up a whole new audience. I've been here a long time and I've seen the changes and I think the museum's going to be one of the best places to visit. They're going to bring it to the forefront. Happy birthday, museum! Writing down all the things that I miss No, I won't go back tonight We can start all over in our hometown, running free, it could be.